7 o'clock, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Maple Farm. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is John Strandberg. I'm uh, uh, Steve's architect. I brought a couple of uh, site plans with me. Just be careful, don't touch the microphone because it sounds like dynamite at home on the TVs. <laughs> What Steve is proposing is a, uh, a greenhouse, and what this drawing shows is his entire property at the top of the page, showing the extreme shape of it, the wedge shape, how it tapers down to just 12 feet at the back. Okay. Uh, and of course, he's uh, been before you before. In fact, I've been before you before uh, when we did a little canopy addition, which was approved. Uh, what he would like to do is add a, a, a small greenhouse, 80 feet by 17 feet wide. And what this would be is just a um, one of those arch type pipe frames with a uh, uh, sheet plastic covering over it. Okay. And uh, he really, it's a temporary building. It's not something that's going to be permanent. There's no concrete slab on the ground or anything like that. Uh, and he's coming before you guys, I think, more as a formality uh, than as a requirement. But uh, he's going to gonna put up one. He's putting up one for now. Yeah, just one. He, okay. he's, he may have one in the future. He may put it here. He may put it, you know, in line with it. Okay. Uh, but he's, you know, away from the property line. He's in line with his existing building, which is this line right here. So he's not near the uh, bike path. What's he going to use it for? Uh, Steve, you're going to use it? Uh, flowers. I was just going to say for flowers. You going to grow them in there? Yes. You going to grow them in there? Yes. So I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. You want to keep the drawing? Or? Yes, please. Yes, okay. we'll keep one. Would you, you two if you want? Would you just kindly put down a mailing address, either for yourself or for Maple Farms, so I can send that out? Okay, if they mail it to me. Okay. That was your second mic. Yes. Yes. Next up is Kyle Pitts. Yep. Uh, I'm just here with a submit an application for an A&R plan. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank sir. you. Sorry. Okay. I'm trying to make this oh, so this is toxic you won't be Yeah, this is the uh, the house. Okay. Yeah, low property. Street number. It is 282 Russell Street. Oh, does this conform? 209 feet. What is this distance here? The width. Mm, okay. It doesn't conform to zoning. Because the zoning bylaw specifically states that the width of the property must conti be continuous, so the 209 foot or whatever the minimum frontage is must be total. What is, what, what, what is this Actually, dimension? It's, it's the, it has to be, the minimum width has to be preserved to the face of the principal structure. Right. Do you know what this width is? So I, don't I think what? it is 150 is our minimum width. So <clears throat> the question is What's is, the scale? One inch is 60. Sixty feet on the scale. Thanks. Uh, 
20, 40, 50, 60. Here we go. Feet, maybe. You said it's 150. Yep. So I'll give you a reference. You can look this up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna have to relate to the people actually get. Uh, <laughs> Section 4.3.7. 4.3.7. At no point between the front lot line and the rear of the principal structure located on the lot shall the lot have a width less than the minimum lot width required. And that is in the business district 150 feet. Um, 175. Well, it's 175 frontage, but the width is over in here. Oh, we oh, never width. changed that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, so, um, although the planning board may issue a special permit to permit lot width of no less than 75 percent of the minimum lot width. Yeah, but he doesn't. They can't fit a 150 by 150 square on here. I don't think. Okay, that's the other part. Width is defined such that a square area, 150 yeah. by 150, must be able to fit into the plan of a lot, and at least one point of that square must lie on the frontage line. Yeah. Even so if they go in 150 feet, which is yep. approximately where the one is, yep. you've only got 130 feet of width. 150 so you need to. Okay. Modify that a little bit there. Okay, so there's 150 feet. Right 150 there. foot square fits here and 150 foot width here. Okay. 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 Absolutely. Thank you. And that's all section 4. Here. Perfect. And Excellent. that is available on the town website. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're here on first and third Tuesday, everyone. So, Excellent. just come in like you did tonight. Thank you so much. And we all set. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear oh, yours. Sorry, sorry. That's all right, yours. Oh, That's your application. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Well, take them all with you. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Tom. Yep. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for the call. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's been a long time. And I do want to apologize, but I want to let Johnny off the hook. Johnny did give me this paperwork shortly after our meetings, almost, I think, a year ago. Yeah. Um, and we've become more of a seasonal business than anything, so we, we went to an off-season, so I kind of buried it in a pile of paperwork. Uh, but the request, I think, that uh, Johnny brought with him, I still have the post-it note, was to give us some up of a schematic of uh, what kind of business we're running. But it's an opportunity, too, to, to talk about a couple of changes. One is we want to um, have Mark, even though I own the property, um, it's really, Mark does this as a side business. He does um, landscaping and small engine repair. So it would be under his name, not mine. And um, other than that, uh, it, there's no changes. It's, it's um, like I said, it's largely seasonal. We pretty much shut down from November till March early April, especially this year, we had no one contact us until the snow, and even after that, it was, we're, we're about 50% of where we were last year, as an example. Uh, right Tom, now. is there a corporate structure, or is it Blades LLC, is that for real, are you? Yeah. And so, Blades Small Engine Repair is the same, or what? Oh, uh, just like a DBA under it, yeah. Okay, it's a DBA? Yeah. Okay, so we got 
the flat plan, where your parking is. Home office, home business. Who lives there? My mom. Your mom. Okay. See, a home business shall be permitted on a residential property and it shall be conducted by the principal practitioner who occupies the main building as his or home bona fide residence with no more than two other persons. Right, she's the owner. No, no. she lives there, but she doesn't help out. <laughs> she would technically have to be the owner according to the home occupation she by would. law. Okay. We can put her name on there. Again, you're not. Well, you can put her name on the business. Well, actually, you're right. She should be on the application. It's not a home occupation if she is. It, it is. It is a home business. But either even a home occupation, a home office says is the, the principal resident. So. So all Indian repair. Is there a way we can waive that requirement? I mean, these people have been doing well, this for how many that, years? That, that's sort of what, now, wh where do you see LLC? No, no he, Blaze Landscaping is a limited liability corporation. And it, but but Blaze, Blaze. Blaze Small Engine Repair is separate from the landscaping business. Is that technically correct? Technically correct, yes. And it's not LLC? Correct. It's well, just the a, landscaping is LLC. That, that's, 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 <laughs> that's a site? Yes, yes. And you run that out of your home? or Same location. I mean, I store my stuff there, but I mean, technically I have a home office where I, where I reside. I do all my paperwork, all my billing, all that out of my home office at my, my residence. And where do you live? Hatfield. That's okay. <laughs> well, that's a mess. No, no. You're just trying to... Yeah, I mean, I store the mowers there, weed whackers there, gas there, truck there. Not really doing anything landscaping wise at the property for no. 22. It's the small engine repair aspect of it. <clears throat> Tom, can you give some history of this property? This was the grain store there? The yeah, yeah. Up until store. my uncle, my uncle John, lived, right. uh, on East Street, he ran the Happy Coal and Grain, um, and they were the the place to go to for grain, coal, uh, nails, screws, anything, all kinds of tools, machinery. Um, he had a home office there, the potbelly stove in the storage area. Uh, when he passed away, uh, my uncle John, uh, who ran a rubbish removal business, took it over temporarily, and then he got out of the business and Huckwitz's opened up on uh, Railroad Street and, and started um, their business. At that point, we used a grain store. We still call it the grain store for largely a bunching shed for asparagus. We had that much there, we filled that place up. And as Mike said, for the last eight to nine years, we've been uh, running small engine repair. That's how it started out there, and then it kind of expands into landscaping. But for the purposes of tonight, we're talking about the small engine repair part. Have there, anybody, have there been no complaints from neighbors about the nature of this business? Not to me. None. None at all. No. In fact, I think we're so inconspicuous, most people don't even know what they, they, they thought we stopped this. Yeah. And they said, How are you guys? Did you ever think about starting up again? We said, yeah, we're doing it now. Mm -hmm. um, well, you guys got to spread the word, is what we're hearing. So yeah, we're trying I mean, to get more signage out there to let people know that we exist. Yeah, well, it's, you guys keep a really clean ship there. There's nothing outside you couldn't tell. Well, that's, who, who actually provoked us to come in front of this planning board? Uh, I was invited to, a number of people kind of just let me know that you should, you should be here, I guess. I'm not sure if there's one person. Just kind of over time, you know, if you're going to do things and cross all the T's and dot all the I's, you might want to come before the board. It makes Sounds sense. Like it makes sense. So I wonder... Okay, well, in, in the, the accessory use, uh,
accessory use customarily incidental to a permitted main use on the same premises, including but not limited to the following. And that's the old home occupation language we have. I'm on page four. Um, bottom of yep. the page. Yep. So, uh, let me just see what that note eight is. Recognized profession. Carpenter, electrician, painter, plumber, other artisan, provided no manufacturing or business requiring continuously employment is carried on. Okay, so he's seasonal. Yep. So it's not continuous. It's not continuous. The accessory use, uh, including but not limited to the following. So that gives us an out for it not being owner occupied. Yep. Do you still uh, farm that property? Yeah. There's How many acres do you farm there? Right, it's seven, seven contiguous, so this contiguous is, this acres. Is kind of well, that's one of the things. You the, know, whole, this, the whole thing, you work well, on your tractors here? Well, that's, that's what I was yeah. going to say. You know, today we might be fixing an engine yeah. on a mower. Tomorrow okay. I got the tractor in here. Yeah. The next. So, so, guys, let's work on finding a way to yeah. fit into the bylaw. Sure. Because if we can't fit you into the bylaw and we give you a pass on it, the next guy who's sitting here. Oh, I agree. Is going to say, "Hey, how about me?" Yeah, no, no. So yeah. that's that's probably one of the reasons yeah. people suggest yeah. we come and, in and, and make sure we cut and, the and letter. Fi fix and farm equipment for yourself is ho wholly permitted. Fixing any equipment for somebody else for the same reason doesn't. Right, work. right. No, but I just came back to yeah. what Mike was saying. It, 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 Tuesday we're doing this. Wednesday we're doing something different in there. So it's not even as 100 percent used for that. Oh yeah. The and farm and trucks in there right now. My little harrow. I got the this in there. Uh, you know. Okay, so this is this is how we're going to do this. We're going to do this pretty much outside of the home business, home occupation, right? Home business, Bill. Yeah, I think not we as have a to. special permit. Not as a special permit. You're not going to be a home. You're not going to be a home business. Okay. We're going to have to do this as a resident artesian, electrician, painter, plumber, carpenter, um, basically a craftsperson. Sure, small home okay. technicians with right, my right. certification. Right. Okay. You're not continuous, like you said, because you only operate part time and you're seasonal. Yeah. It's incidental to the main uh, use of the premises, which is farming and residence. Right. And you're basically only using a room of the garage, or well, not, not in the garage, but the, the, the old grain store. Grain store, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, 22 by 40, Tom? Yeah, right. Yeah, we measured it yesterday. <laughs> no. It's not heated, so we're out of there once it starts getting cold, and we don't go in there until it starts getting warm. <laughs> a good excuse, isn't it? Yeah, it is a good excuse to shut down. Yeah. <laughs> it's limited electricity. We don't have any 220s. We just run 110 volts in there. It's small stuff. It's really. All the small engine repair, basic, basic stuff. Okay. So that the the what we're working off here is that the accessory use uh, says including but not limited to the following, and then it gives two examples, which are both owner occupied. But in this case, the fact that it is uh, it's family occupied but not owner occupied. Sure. Um, um, okay. You own that property, Tom? Yes. My mom has it right to life, though. So as long as she wants. Okay, so since it is family occupied, since it is seasonal, um, um, very few customers, right? Yeah, we're trying, but <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you you, you pick up most of your stuff. We pick, them all. We pick up. I mean, occasionally people will come through and drop it off. With us. It, Five percent, and, and oftentimes we don't really know who they are. Well, something will show up with no tag on it, so that's how infrequent it is. We pick up ninety-five percent. So.
So it's historically been used as a business. Right. For ag related business. Yeah. And it is part of an active farm. Plus, where did you get that fun on a farm statement from? <laughs> it was fun this morning at 5 a.m. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a motion um, uh, to consider this. And how long have you been doing it? Eight years. Been that long? Okay, I'll make a motion to consider this an accessory use on the basis that it's a family occupied property, the business is seasonal, property has historically been used for agricultural related purposes, it is part of an active farm, and it has been in operation for eight years without complaint. That's the motion. Would you say the accessory use of this? Yeah, to consider it an accessory okay. use. All right, second that. Any, Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 to 0. Great, thank you. And we will continue doing it. If you ever hear anything, you know where to reach us. So. Yep. <laughs> so actually, we don't need this right. after right. all. Okay. okay. Uh, well, you may want the front page. Yeah, sitting stuff in. Yeah. Oh, you got that one. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Appreciate it. Have a good night. And good stop night. by our stand. It's right out there. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thank good night. You. Mr. Thank Darnold. You. Yes, sir. Um, here I'd like to present the five college library annex building um, for your scheduling of a hearing. I got the application, two sets of um, mailing. mailing labels. And we have the plans over here. Wow, there's a lot of the butters, huh? Okay. Do we need to order more stamps? No, no, we got plenty for that. We just got a bundle. How much you want to go through tonight? Um, do we have a real quick, easy presentation just to show you a quick overall. Uh, this was presented to the board previously uh, on a formal basis. Uh, this is off of North, uh, North Maple Street and Rocky Hill Road, uh, proposing to build a large book and annex for the five college um, <clears throat> library and basically going to build the first phase, first module first, be a small parking area in the annex itself, a long driveway coming in. Uh, we're in front of the Conservation Commission currently to review the project. Um, How guess, big is the first module? Uh, you would ask that question. Um, I'll have to look in the big plans to tell you that. It's going to be one hefty application for that. Is that? Say it's 250 feet long. But we're coming to the board tonight to, I mean, to approve the entire project with the understanding that it probably would not be built all at one time. So we want to be up front with you regarding phasing as well. And we designed the drainage, we looked at the drainage twice, designed the drainage to accommodate the entire build out. And then we did another separate plan showing just a phase one diagram construction and ensure that the drainage would be accommodated if phase two, three, and four did not transpire. Well, who do you represent again? Um, five College, Library Annex. 
Are they affiliated with the university? Oh, yeah. Yes. Sure refresh our memories. Yeah. Um, they're the, the five colleges. Inc. The, 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 the five colleges. They've gotten together. They have a requirement to store the different books from different colleges. So, so you're, you're building the structure. That the one structure you're building will be a total eventually of 138,000 square feet. If the whole thing comes built out. It'll be 138,000 square feet. Correct. A, a building. Correct. Okay. Is the building on this thing taxable? No. I believe, I mean, I'm not going to, I believe it's an educational use, so it probably wouldn't, I assume not be taxable. Storing books? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, that's not a determination to make. Yeah. Well, the it's assessors will look thing. at that. Can't find the uh, building. Here we go. Yeah, the first module is 126 feet plus the annex is 133. <coughs> so I'm sorry, it's 150 feet for the first module. Yeah, five you know if this is going to be state funded? I'm not sure exactly sure. where the funding is for the construction. First available date is July 7th. Is that okay? It's your call. Well, I mean, it's okay, it's okay with you. I just want to make sure that it's not, that it's not a bad date for you to make it. Um, I do have some other questions for the board. Um, we are in front of the Conservation Commission and also they have requested a peer review for the project, which is fine. And they have chosen a peer review, um, Greg Newman, who's a professional sanitary engineer. They want him to do the review of the drainage. I think we've had some conversations with you. Uh, we typically would use one of the board approved peer review engineers. Um, there was a question whether or not it was uh, amenable to have both the planning board and the um, conservation commission use the same peer review for a portion of it so the client isn't stuck with a double review with the understanding that the Greg Newman probably would not be able to review the planning board aspect but could right. we understand that aspects. we did sign a contract you did okay. uh, at our prior last meeting mm -hmm. uh, jointly with the conservation commission okay so that's so that's taken care of that's yep. taken yep. care of right. so you just need yep. to have have another just re, re, get somebody else to review the planning board yeah, and, and right just and we, have we, your reviewer coordinate, coordinate so. Say. so the yep. board is comfortable with having the drainage done yep. by newman and the remainder of the items typically under review by one of the yep. board approved engineers. Correct. Right. So, we, yep. so we're doing site plan approval, <coughs> and this uh, because this is aquifer. <coughs> business use in the aquifer, even though <coughs> it's uh, well, and erosion control. Sediment control. Here will be seven seven. Yeah, I broke it down on the side there so you can explain it to the client. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the way it works out, Mark, it's up to ten up to ten thousand square feet, three hundred bucks. Okay. Ten up from the next ten thousand to a hundred thousand is four cents a square foot, which is ninety thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. And then above that is eight cents a square foot. Okay. For the balance. All right. Um, I left seven set of plans here. Yep, that's good. And we'll take a, a, a new set of plan, record with the uh, town clerk. Yes, Is that yeah. correct. With your check. Yes. With our check and the uh, application. Yes. Yeah. Very good. I appreciate Very your good. time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, uh, I do have two sets of drainage calculations. You want me to distribute that to the two drainage reviewers, or do you want a copy? Uh, we only need one copy. Okay. For our record, 
Oh, you want to have a copy with the yeah. uh, at the town clerk of the drainage council? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Yeah. Town Thank clerk you. should have a copy of everything, everything you file with us. Okay. So that people can go to her office instead of trying to catch up with us to look at what you have filed. And we'll file, we'll submit a complete set of grants calculations to both the reviewers. Okay. Both reviewers. Yes. Very good. Thank you again. Okay. Mr. Goulet or Mr. McConnell? Good evening. Good evening. Haven't seen you in a while, Pete. Nice. No, it's been very quiet. Um, I'm Peter McConnell. I'm here representing Alex Farms, Wayne Goulet. Some of you will recall that about five years ago, um, you granted subdivision approval to the parcel of land at the corner of South Maple Street and No Valley Road for 64 lots to be built um, on about 150 acres. Um, since that time, uh, Mr. Goulet had decided that he would rather keep farming it. So he has entered into an agricultural preservation restriction with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the town of Hadley, and actually the, uh, the U.S. government. Um, one of the requirements. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> one of the um, requirements, actually, of the U.S. government is that we rescind the subdivision approval. They feel that there is a, uh, some liabilities that come with that, and it would be appraised differently with and without the subdivision approval. So they've asked us to come before you and request that you rescind our subdivision approval. Um, with the help of Mr. Dwyer, we found a statute and form that allow that. So I filled out the form that Mr. Dwyer provided for me that basically says that this uh, subdivision approval was granted on October 26th. 2010. Um, I have a copy of the plan and a copy of the decision. Was that long ago? It was. We're getting old fast. And so I'm asking that you um, rescind that subdivision approval. Um, and we are alleging that at this time there is no mortgage and no um, lots have been sold, which allows you to do that rescission. I forwarded one of these to Mr. Dwyer this afternoon so that he could review it. It would be yes, a question. I have looked it over, and it, um, frankly, as I explained to Attorney McConnell, we have never done this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um, in this case, the uh, request is <clears throat> from the property owner, and I think the understanding is that this doesn't become effective until it's recorded in the Registry of Deeds. And if the transaction does not go through, it will not be recorded, and we'll probably get a request to rescind, rescind our vote. Rescind the rescind. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But I am told by APR, we, we Wayne signed the documents three months ago, two months ago. They've been winding their way through the state and the federal government in the town of Hadley. We are told that um, they are ready to be executed by the government and that the money is there. Um, because we did tell them we wouldn't come before you until they told us they had the checks. <laughs> so we believe it's going to happen imminently. It's in the mail. In the mail. That's what Wayne was afraid of. <laughs> okay. So do we need a motion for this? Uh, yeah, I'll uh, make a motion to... Uh, to... send subdivision approval at the request of the property owner. Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four to zero. Thank you very much. You want a date on here, Peter? Yeah, I'm going to date the notary, but yes, you, why don't you date I your think signature? I it does say the meeting held on the 19th, so. Yes. Okay. You want both copies signed? No, that's your, copy. that's, oh, that's, your, that's your notary. Just to get it to record, right? I, okay. You would acknowledge it's your free act indeed? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> and we are getting close to um, submitting the over 55 plans for Barry Roberts really? on oh, East Street. Okay. Um, how many copies of the? Pretty big. Um, hey. I would say the stand, standard six. Okay. I mean, right. even if it's massive, I mean, we've got to distribute them by the, where right. the bylaw might be, so. 
And uh, I don't know if it's necessary, but we plan to go before the Historical Commission beforehand just with a rendering okay. so that they can give you their input. Okay. And everything else I think is done and we're ready to come to you with the final. Okay. I will... Um, Could you just send me a copy? I was going to say, I will notarize it and send you a copy. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Peter, Peter Wayne, yes. can you stay oh, for a minute? Yes. Because we have... Uh, the one sort of agenda item I put on is discussion of roads. And Peter does represent the developers of two streets that uh, Gooseberry and Baker, or has in the past. So I just thought maybe you could update the board on. What, what I told Bill I would be willing to do is to draft the legal descriptions for Bayberry and for Gooseberry. Okay. I'm confident that I can get the signatures necessary for Gooseberry. That shouldn't be any problem. I'm not, I haven't had any contact with David Wace or Merv Newton for five, eight, ten years. I do have old telephone numbers, email addresses, and I will endeavor to find them and see if they will commit to make the gift to the town, which okay. obviously they should, um, but I can't guarantee that I can get those, but I will um, get, definitely get the description done on Gooseberry and those signatures, and then we'll get what we can from Newton and Weiss. Okay. And I'll at least give you the, the legal description so if the town actually wanted to make a taking, they'd be able to do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate those it. Those are the two that I can help with. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Have a good week. Have a good night. And you also. Thank you. So, um, if we could talk about um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's start with Laurel Drive. Uh, that letter that you, we received a couple of weeks ago was meant to be the initial letter that started the taking or started the acceptance process, right, okay. which we were supposed to reply to within 45 days. I'm basing this on watching the selectmen's meeting last week. Uh, Mike Klamoski did uh, uh, was there and did say that he thought that we were waiting for something from him and he didn't have enough information. So, um, what I would like to do is just send a letter to the select board, which is meeting tomorrow night, saying that uh, we do not have enough information to give you an opinion yep. yet. I did see David Nixon in a town hall last week, whatever it was, and uh, he asked me if we thought what we thought of it, and I said, you know, basically the roll is in good shape, the bed's been there forever. I said, the drainage works. I said, we don't have a, a big deal about, you know, what's there. I said, but we don't have a as-built plan. That's the only thing that we're waiting for. I said, I know Randy was looking, working on that, but I don't know what the status of that was. I, that's really where we stand. Okay, so uh, no as-built and uh, no recommendation from highway. Because he's also waiting for an as built. Yeah, I think that if if we have the as built, everything else will fall into place. I I, I told it that we see no showstopper um, for that street once we get the plan. Because Randy was then looking at our old records, what he had pretty much. Uh, there was one thing in there that he saw that uh, was a surprise, but just the, some of the size of the pipes. That was the only thing he got out of that when he was in looking at it one night after the meeting. Okay. I will get something out to the select board. Okay. Um, and um, then. Uh, Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Holly Road. Um, um, I did have a chance to talk to Joel Bard um, at town meeting, and um, he had a couple of thoughts. Um, one was 
taking, uh, doing a tax taking, which does take a while. The problem we have is that the assessors are not assessing roadbeds at this mm -hmm. point. So um, uh, I would suggest that it might be helpful to have a joint meeting with the assessors. I don't know if that's I don't, I don't know what the rationale was for their coming up with that, because they used to be assessing roads. I they did that because if the... If, the Paul took if one. they fail to pay the tax, then the town owns it. They have to take it and they own it, and that's why they stopped assessing all roads, subdivisions. And that made sense. That's what originally happened on Holly Road. It was the taken on that. Yep. Then he turned around. I guess he wanted to develop the next lot over, so he went and paid the tax. The town owned that at one time. Then he, he got it back. Uh, and then at that time, they, they stopped charging tax on, on roads. So do, you, do we think it's worth having a meeting with them? Do we want to ask them to begin assessing taxes on roads? No. Why? Because then, then if they walked away from it, the heck would you tell them to have that you own it? They got to take it by a tax taken. The, 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 it's a, it's a catch twenty two here. If they don't put the let's say they don't put a good quality road in, and they and, and they don't run away, they stay in the area. I mean. Of course, we we always we, we keep a a lot or two. The biggest thing here is that under the, under the, I guess under the new regulations, I don't see a problem taxing the road because our new subdivision regulations are a lot tighter on the road, the plans, having stuff being but, able to be turned over down in the future. In fact, if anything, it might help because if, let's say, they put the road in for the plan and they walk away and they never come forward with the stuff to turn it over to the town. If the town starts to tax it, we have all the paperwork we need to take it for taxes. As a and that's, it's, wait a minute. Before that happens, there are lots, if you're holding two lots, those lots are released? Well, that sort of goes to your point. The lots are released when the work is completed as designed. Right. So if someone says they're going to put in a three-inch road, right. and they put in a two-inch road, the lots never get released. Then why, why can't at that point it be, for them to be released, it goes to town meeting for acceptance? And it, that's over with right there. Yeah, well, going forward, it's not going to be a problem. Right. Because we already have, we're not even going to look at the plans until they give us a binding commitment to turn the road over to us. Or forever keep it private. Um, but um, we're trying to straighten out. How the road is you just got to bite the bullet, the town's going to take it and fix it and do what they got to do. And that's it. Stop playing with it. Well, there's some part of it is the legal question of who can give it to us. Yeah. And I'm not sure, it looks, and I'm not going to do the title for the town on this, but it looks like the, um, the people on the street, the lot owners own to the middle of the street. <coughs> So, <coughs> if we can get each of them in turn to sign a deed over to the town of their interest to the middle of the street, that solves that problem. See, Zedonic disagrees with that. He says, according to his map, all the boundary lines that are lots are up to the side of the road. And the road layout is here. He showed me that. He's the town. Yep. He's, he, I wish he wouldn't give legal and zoning opinions. But he's, he's... He's wrong, I believe. Well... Because there's a statute that says, depending on how the deed is written, you own to the middle of the road. If it were, you know, a, if it were a town road, it wouldn't be a question. You don't own to the middle of your street because it's a town road. But... Um, I don't want to own the road. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> no. 
corner road. So that's a, that's a good question. Who do we get it from? And actually, that would have been a question to ask Pete McConnell, too, because apparently Barry Roberts is involved somehow in Holly Drive. His, his father's corporation developed it. So, I thought they dissolved that, according to the Secretary of State. They may have. And there may or may not be a, a, any binding obligation on Barry Roberts to do anything. But I think he would probably agree to sponsor Peter McConnell to do a legal description of the road. Now, he, he would be willing to do part, I'm sure he'd be, because he wants to be a good neighbor. I'm sure he would want to do something. But he may not have the legal ability to give us title to the road. Likewise, on, um, on Bayberry, uh, when um, uh, Newton and Ways, they sold, they sold off, wholesaled 10 lots. Mm -hmm. They retained title to the road. And they're gone. Yeah, there could be another Holly Road down the road. And um, no matter how much the neighbors want us to accept the road as a town way, they don't have the legal title in the road to give it to us. That's the problem. Can the town take it? That is, um, that is something that Joel Bard mentioned in passing. Um, if you take it, do we take it as a matter of public safety? Well, Apparently the road's completely deteriorated down there. It's probably dangerous to drive on it. Well, eminent domain, you can take it. You can take it for public purposes. Right. Uh, but you still have to pay just compensation. And in this case, the compensation for Holly Road Measure. is Measure. Uh, well, one, one option is to say you're off the hook for fixing it. Give us. We're taking it from, for, from you for a dollar. Um, the other um, thing that Joel mentioned is that um, considering the possibility the town won't, might not want to take it in the condition it's in, it, it still has to go to town meeting. And, um, you know, town meeting can go any which way. We could get Camilla um, to fix it. She did a nice lot job on Laurel Drive. <laughs> um, what uh, one option um, Joel <coughs> suggested is that the town could vote a betterment assessment, which would basically um, yeah. charge you know, every homeowner charge every homeowner for fixing the road in front of their house, and uh, then take it and it'd be a town road thereafter. The only road that is you're talking about is Holly Road. All the other roads are in decent shape, in mm -hmm. good shape, right? So. Before they get to be like Holly Road, why not move? If you can't go through Freedom McConnell, contact them to work things out, then take it and get it over with because it's going to end up to kick the can okay. down the road. So and and that's the fine. Same way. We can recommend that the town take it. That, right. that, that in turn is an expensive proposition. Uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm just laying these out as options. Right. And, and we had this conversation at, at one of uh, the meetings when you were not here. It, we sort of said that uh, no one else is doing this, so we better. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, if we don't, they're not. Nobody's going to fix this. Um, that's right. Yeah. So you know, obviously, we don't have a but we don't have a legal budget of our own, and uh, I think. Some of these things have to go to town meeting to t take property by eminent domain. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone will stand up. Some people like to stand up and talk anyway, but I don't think anybody will stand up and say the town should not take Holly Road by eminent domain. Uh, but um, I think we also want to straighten out whether um, Bayberry might be, if we're going to do one, we should do two at the same time. Yeah, and I think we should go after Bayberry and Gooseberry seem like something, I mean, those are roads that are in decent condition right now. Take them in decent condition, and they're pretty much straightforward, as long as we can get the right, the right legal way to do it. Well, Holly Road is, Holly Road's going to cost money, one way or another. There's no question about that. I yeah. mean, I think in Northampton, what they ended up doing was just saying, "Yeah, uh, it, it needs repairs, but it's been we've been plowing it for so long that um, 
They just cut them. They would just, we'll just take it and be done with it. Right. So, um, there's a list that John got here about, oh, uh, so the other ones on there, uh, likewise in, in maybe in fairly decent, decent um, we have Birch Meadow. Right, isn't that one? And um, so, uh, John, John, I think you got this from the highway department. Yeah. Um, unaccepted roads that the town pay, uh, plows. Hawley Road, Honeypot Road, Laurel Drive, Red Smith's Road. I don't know why they're plowing that. That's a private driveway. Yeah, that, that's something uh, I've wondered all my life. <laughs> Bayberry and Gooseberry. <coughs> I guess there's something down there like a drainage structure that they need to be able to get to. Private roads not plowed by the town. Birch Meadow, and I think Birch Meadow probably should be on the plow so, list at this point. Something we want to, may want to grab. There's 10 homes on that, isn't uh, it? Berkway, Golden Court, Greenleaves Drive, which are all driveways. Hockenham Woods, which is another driveway. That's a driveway. And Westgate Center Drive. Right, West, well, the, the uh, Westgate Center Drive they don't want to give to the town. Hockenham <laughs> Woods is that, but it's a private drive. Greenleaves <coughs> Drive they don't want to give to the town. We don't plow Golden Court? You know, it, the town <coughs> doesn't directly probably, but uh, the housing okay. authority does. Okay, so. we, we probably take care of it. Yeah. What do they do? No, they take care of that whole thing. Do they do? Work, well, yeah, Golden Court and Workway is both Golden Golden Court, if you would. Yeah. yeah. Birch Meadow. Which one? Birch Meadow is the one off of uh, Rocky Hill. That's oh, Rocky. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's Kevin's. Yes. Right. He he has no no retained interest in it. As far as I know, he doesn't. I think. There's one, maybe one building lot left there, but um, he, does, he doesn't own it or have any interest in it as far as okay. I know. There so, was no building lot held there? The problem is, we can, as we've been told, unfortunately, every time we try to force someone, we can only hold lots for the completion of improvements as shown on the plan. Once the improvements are complete, we cannot hold on to a lot. We can't say then and, and now bring it in for acceptance. We've, we've been forced at threat of litigation to release that last lot when the work is complete because that's what the subdivision law says. On Birch Meadow? On Birch Meadow. I don't believe we have anything on Birch Meadow. The reason we have something on Laurel Drive is it was never completed to town standards. It was intentionally left incomplete at the time. And so, but I think that's the only one we still have a uh, hold anything on. Um, it, Birch Meadows in decent condition, right? Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah there's one we yeah. should grab too. That was one also where the, um, unfortunately we never got an as built on that, which I guess, Carl Sightwork found out when they dug I where thought things we did, weren't supposed to be. No, I thought we did get an as-built on Birch Metal, but even the as-built wasn't right. That's right, we did get an as-built, and it, yeah, things weren't where they were supposed to be. Supposed that was when which his name dug up the, uh, wa the, the line or something. Yeah, they did dig safe, they did, they looked at everything and they scooped up the phone lines in the yeah. first grab and then apparently stopped dead and said we want have, we want witnesses so um, so um, based on what I saw at the select board meeting last week they seem to be interested they, they were talking about Laurel primary Laurel initially and Hawley to a lesser extent they aren't the other ones aren't on their radar yet um, but uh, Jerry Devine, at least, seems very enthusiastic about getting some of this cleared up. And, um, yeah, I'd be happy to talk to, to initiate contact. I don't know whether it'd be worthwhile. Um, it would probably make more sense to invite some of the select board to one of our meetings to talk about this and have it be the agenda item mm -hmm. because 
if we go to their meetings, we're one of 20 things and there's a pressure to keep moving. So we probably have a better chance of setting yeah. up a discussion here. I, I think that makes sense too. Because we only need one or two to really get moving. I mean, but I, I, I really think, Jimmy, this, we should just take every one of these things and deal with them and get it over with once and for all. Well, I, I agree. I just don't know how this, I don't know how fast we can deal with some of the more complex ones like Holly because it needs the improvements. The ones that are in good shape may be easier, may be easier to grab right. than the ones that are going to cost some money to repair, but we should do them. But you still can take them. What did they repair them this year or next year or five years? Oh, I, I agree. Yeah. Right. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah. You know, get, get, if we don't start, It'll never happen. At least, even if we start slow and get something going, you know, resident paying taxes, they deserve to have their streets taken care of by the town. Exactly. So. You know, it's not, it's not those homeowners' fault that things fell apart the way they did. None of them. So. Well, it, it was, it all happened, um, well, Holly, Holly was out there a long time. We were, Literally, no one, even Joe Zagrodnik wasn't on the planning board that proved that. Um, Laurel, that's been hanging out there for its own reasons. Everyone's known that's out there. Uh, Bayberry, Gooseberry, Birch Meadow. Funny thing is, those all sort of happened around the same time. Mm -hmm. And they all, everybody was talking the same way about, oh, you can't, there must have been a case that was decided or something. Uh, uh, how many years is that? Oh, 15? Uh, Bay, Barry, Goose Bay, that's going to be well over 15 years ago. Uh, no, it isn't. It isn't. Uh, at least not on Bay, Barry. I was, uh, I had a reason to look up and the, the deeds are more recent than that. Really? I think they may have gotten started on the, um, you know, they had a sort of a false start and they came back a year later to um, finish up the subdivision. But uh, yeah, there were, uh, they're, they're, they're not even 15 years old up there. So that's all the more reason that should be uh, moved on now. Yeah, well, um, that's true while they're in, still in good condition, right? right. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, one, one question we'll have to talk about this with the select board because I think they have to initiate it is we want to propose taking three streets, uh, maybe four streets by eminent domain, Bayberry, Gooseberry, Hawley, and Birch Meadow. We don't have to take Laurel because the owner forward. is willing to give it to us. Right. So, um, um, but we need to um, need to be in touch with the select board. Uh, you know, they they might not want to take Holly. They should. I'm not saying they shouldn't. Well, but they may not. We we need to be in we need to be in touch with them because they have to. We have to. We have to work to get them to the next step. I know, with them. but if this board turns around and makes a recommendation in writing to them and verbally then you got it in their court. They have to set it up to take the thing. And if they don't, they fail, not us. I would, I would think that if the planning board initiates paperwork to go forward, right. the selectmen would follow through. Right. Because they'd have a lot of upset townspeople. What do you mean you don't want it? All right, so I think that's about as far as we can take it tonight. Yep. Uh, but I will, I will contact. Uh, first of all, I'll get, a, I'll get a letter off tomorrow to the select board saying that we make we have no recommendation on Laurel at this time because we lack sufficient information. Uh, okay. I won't put in the letter, but we don't see any problem with it. I think you've conveyed that. You know, we're not raising any issues. Um, so, um, and then the other thing is to try to set up a meeting with some representatives of the select board to develop a plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So uh, I will see if they are willing to come to one of our meetings and maybe. Uh, <clears throat> In that plan, though, you're going to list all the streets that we can talk about? Uh, yeah. Because I think the list maybe. Whether we, we put a priority on, on, on the best ones to get done before those deteriorate and then. But then I think they should all be done at once. You do all the legal and you get them all together, you just, every one is, instead of coming back and doing that over. Yeah, I think it would be easier. Um, so, um, either, the two, either of the two meetings in June would work. Yeah, we have two light meetings in June. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to try to shoot for the 16th because I think it might be useful to have Larry here okay, to talk fine. about that because he's he's done this in other communities. That's fine. This June 16th. Yes. So that's two letters to the select. Or the second one could be an email. I have all of their addresses. So I don't know. All right. That's all I have on that one. Um, minutes? Minutes. Of May 5th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 5th. Uh, I guess I'll second it. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four to zero. Very good. We have one invoice to pay for the Gazette for the legal ad. Oh, that was for our zoning bylaws. <coughs> that passed. <coughs> tax rate because it was a uh, subdivision? He probably did for a while. Yeah. Once that once that plan gets recorded in the Registry of Deeds, they're building lots. They're building lots. Yeah. Uh, actually, not entirely. He didn't pay it on all 60 because the road wasn't built. But everything, that would, every frontage lot Funny. became a, a building lot, a buildable That's lot. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's all I have. Everything else, Bill? I don't have anything else. Anybody else? Yeah, I got a question. Go ahead. What happens if a member doesn't approve a plan? Like, said, like site plan approval? Yeah. You, we, we are a five member board, so we need a super majority, which is four votes in favor. So if one vote, if one member votes no and the other four members vote in favor, it'll pass. If two members don't vote in favor, two, if two members vote no, it will fail. And, and then the, what happens? Then it depends. The developer can then decide if he wants to basically sue the board for why was it turned down, does he have ground to sue, and the downside of that is if he sues and prevails, we there's no condition set on it. He can just build it as he or she applied for. Is that correct, Bill? Yes. So like if we approve it, we can put conditions on it. If we fail to approve it with it and the vote doesn't pass, and he goes to court and prevails in court on litigation, then he can just build it by that plan regardless of what we think other things should have been on there for conditions. The conditions are null and void. Yeah. The judge becomes the planning board. I just, I can't get myself to vote for something that they paid nothing to this town. Yeah. Everybody else pays their way and I just, yeah. to me, I don't care what they say and how they say and what they're using to get there. 
to me, it's just not right. It's not fair to every taxpayer in this town. You know, let them go somewhere else. Why are they in our town taking up our uh, valuable land and not using our resources, roads, everything else, and not paying one penny? That, to me, is not right. I, ca I can't get myself to really seriously vote for that. Well, certain laws well, are immoral. We'll wait and see what this goes for. We, 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 we don't have, the public hearing is not open now. No. So, this you, just the a back, background question was answered. Uh, <coughs> uh, we'll yep. let them put on their case. And yeah, we'll, see. Um, we'll see if they can persuade five, four members of the board to vote yes. Perfect. Anything else? Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any, all in favor? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's history. Thank you and thank you, Richard. <laughs>